Hi, I'm Rick Hamlin, and we've got Deborah Norville here in our offices talking about her new book, The Power of Respect. Deborah, how did you learn about respect? I think most of us learn it at home, um, or that's certainly where the education should start. And growing up down south, it was, it was just imbued in the culture. You would never refer to an adult by their first name. And even if you use the first name, it would always be Miss Mary or Miss Susie or Mr. Mr. Jim. You would never say Jim, Susie, and Mary. Um, even if they wanted you to, it just wasn't done. What's the difference between respect and manners? Manners is please and thank you. Uh -huh. Manners is, oh no, you first. Respect is treating other people in a way that gives them the assumption of the dignity they should have. And, and I like that definition because too often, particularly in our society today, we've forgotten that everyone is deserving of dignity. And, and I think respect automatically presents that dignity back. I, I respect you, I will treat you with respect because my default mode is that there is something about you which is worthy of respect. Is there a spiritual component to respect? There can be, but yeah. there doesn't have to be. Uh -huh. um, I think respect certainly is a part of, of, of anyone who is a spiritual person. You know, you, you, most religions um, have certain qualities that are, are part of, of all religions, gratitude being one of them, respect being another one. You respect the deity that you worship. Uh, you respect uh, the hierarchy of the, um, the formalized church or synagogue or whatever. But take it out of the realm of spirituality. Just take it into everyday relationships. Uh, respect is really the grease which helps society move smoothly. And I think one of the reasons so many of us today feel ill at ease about flipping on a show, uh, you know, on the cable or listening to talk radio or surfing the internet and clicking down below the article and seeing the comments that people make, there's a coarseness, there's a rudeness, there's a, there's a disrespect, there's a meanness that seems to be percolating throughout our society. And I don't think we've really recognized how ultimately destructive that can be. And I think that's really why I wrote this book. I, you know, I, I couldn't have anticipated all of the news events that have happened in recent weeks when, when I started working on this thing a couple of years ago. But what I did know was that I've seen it in my own workplace. I've seen it in the schools that my children attend. Um, I see it standing in the line at the grocery store. I see it at the airport where people are elbowing to be the first on. As far as I can tell, we're all going to land at the same time. How can you respond to disrespect without being disrespectful? I've always had this way of dealing with people. When, Look, I'm blue-eyed, I'm blonde. I started in my career in television when I was 19 years old. No one respected me because I really hadn't earned anybody's respect. And so when people would disrespect me, as often happened, you know, I'd get the, the creepy story, I'd get the, you know, the doofus dumb blonde story or a dismissive remark from, you know, bold-faced named people. Rather than respond in kind, my thought process was always kill them with kindness. And actually, be extremely deferential. It's very hard to lord it over someone who treats you with respect, who solicits your opinion, who acts in a way that communicates to that individual, there's something about you that I find admirable. And that's a quality of respect. When you treat someone with respect, you are assuming that there is something about them which is to be admired, to be respected. And when you communicate that to people, people sit up a little straighter. They feel a little bit better about themselves. And when, they, when you are someone who has made them feel good about themselves, are they going to snap my head off? No. They're going to respond in kind.